Hello and welcome. You should be hearing my audio right now. If you don't, please check the volume level on your computer and make sure that your volume is turned up. You can also check your volume by going to the GoToWebinar control panel. <clears throat> Excuse me. I apologize, I'm losing my voice a little bit. You can also go to your GoToWebinar control panel and you can do a sound check and you can also switch from microphone and speakers to a telephone or from telephone to microphone and speakers. If you continue to have difficulty with audio, you can go to the 1-888-259-8418 helpline for assistance. So you don't necessarily need a camera or a microphone today, but you can use the question panel to ask questions throughout the presentation. The question panel is located on your GoToWebinar uh, control panel, so just locate that question panel right now. And let me know that you're with me. If you would, right here in the question panel, enter a question for staff. Let me know um, if there's a particular topic that you would like to learn about today, or at least that you can hear me and that you're ready to get started. Don't be alarmed that you cannot see the question panel. Only I can do so. Great, I see that several of you have found. The question panel. Okay. Helping me answer questions behind the scene today is Heidi Huff Haig. She's an instructional designer with the, with the Center for Instructional Technology. She's fairly new to the college, but she has been a great asset um, to our team. And she's an amazing instructional designer. So hopefully you'll get a chance to work with Heidi in the future. Um, but she's also going to be helping to answer questions behind the scenes today. Okay, so let's jump right into the several different items that we have today to talk about um, from the what's new in Ivy Learn. Ivy Learn is always changing. There's always update, updates being made periodically, approximately every three weeks. Sometimes there are new features, sometimes there are um, behind the scenes types of technical issues that get resolved. Um, but the one thing you can count on in Ivy Learn is that it is always evolving. So today I want to talk to you about a couple things that um, I think might be helpful to you. Some are new and some are just some features that may still cause some confusion because we get some questions about that. So I'm going to jump right into the Ivy Learn platform. And the first thing I want to talk to you about is when you're preparing your courses um, for the semester, whether it's an online course or even um, if you're doing this for your traditional or hybrid sections, there's been some questions about using the comments to download content. And we know that policy requires all of us as a faculty member to post assignment due dates um, and deadlines. And you can do um, create those in a several different ways. But if you are using content from the statewide library of online courses, um, those due dates have probably already been established for you. So how do you keep those due dates? I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to go into my sandbox shell. And actually, I'm going to go to the Commons first. So remember, the Commons is only available to you as a faculty member. So I'm going to click the Commons. And when we get to the Commons, I'm going to look up for some statewide content. So I'm going to turn off this Public Resources button. And maybe I'm going to look for just Accounting 101. The statewide content will appear 
Here's one for face-to-face, -face, and here's our Accounting 101 statewide for spring. So I'm going to select this particular course. It can be any course or material that you want from the Commons. And I have the ability here to import the course into my course shell, or I can download the course. When I import, it's really easy to do. I select the course where I want it to be copied into. And remember, we're working with Sandbox 3. Okay, and then I import into a new course. Importing does not, from this method, does not preserve your due dates. Okay, this just moves the content into your course. Okay, so now I've added that content to my course, but I do not have any um, due dates. If I want to preserve the due dates, if they've been created for me within the statewide online content, I want to download this course. So I select download. And you see it's popped up down here on my index view. And then I'm going to go into the course. So I'm going to click dashboard. And I'm going to select the course where I want this information to be located. So I'll put this in my practice shell. Okay. So here I am. I'm going to go into settings, which is available to me as a faculty member. I click settings. And over here on the right hand side, import course content. I can select the content type. This is where I can copy from another Canvas course, or I can use the one that I've already um, downloaded. So this was an export package. I can choose my file, or I believe you can drag and drop. Okay, so I've dragged and dropped that onto there. I want to do all content, and I click Import. We're now going to have to wait for the system to catch up with us. But if all goes well, I've now preserved those due dates that have been established for me um, by doing an import versus just a, a download. Okay, that's a lot of information. I'm going to show you what that looks like once we get import that content. Um, are there any questions about importing and exporting? Oh, Valerie has a comment that hers is a 12-week course, and the typically these due dates are set up for a 16-week course. That's right. Is there a, a printed version? Deborah, we do have some resources available in the Faculty Resource Center, and I'll make sure that you get those. Okay. All right, and can you... In, um, can you import things from a specific content from another course and you can from this import content you can um, copy a canvas course import uh, from another course as well um, someone asked me about if they had a blackboard zip file this is also where you would do that and again where i'm located i'm in settings within the actual course and then i select the file when i select a file I can do select specific content. Okay, so you can select very specific content to be copied over. So let's go into our home page here.
I'm going to go down to the syllabus summary to see that if my things have copied over. Okay, so this has preserved my due dates on my calendar. Okay, and the other way that I did it, just straight from the commons where I selected the course, that was in my other course called Sandbox 3. And you'll notice when we go into the summary, oh, this one might still be loading. Yeah, this one is still loading, so it's in the queue. We have a lot of people copying right now, so we're still trying to catch up with each other. Now, there's a couple ways that you can change or add um, your due dates. Okay, one is to actually go into the individual modules. You can pick a better example here. You can go into the module section and you can select an individual item. Okay, so we could select, um, here's a mini quiz. I can click on that actual item, select edit. And I can, under the assign, I can sign a, a due date. By default, it goes to 11.59 p.m. on that particular date, and then you click Save. So there's a couple clicks when you're setting up individual um, due dates by the individual view. Here's another trick for you. Go into the calendar. So I'm going to go over here to my calendar on the Global Navigation menu. And you know that each one of these calendars, the color blocks correspond with the, the course cards on your dashboard. And I want to go into, I'm going to turn all of these off. I just want to see my sandbox shell. Any undated items. Okay. So now we know that we've loaded that course and we didn't preserve any of our due dates. So now we're in one particular class. I want to make sure that nothing else is turned on. I only want to work with one particular course. Okay, so all my color blocks are turned off. Okay, so here I have these due dates and now I can drag and drop these to the appropriate date. Okay, you can adjust where that is in the calendar by using your little uh, backward and forward directional arrows on your calendar. And you can just drag and drop. Drag and drop is also the best way that you can kind of manipulate from a 12-week course, um, from a 16-week course down to the 12 weeks, and so you can manipulate where those due dates um, are. So you can drag and drop, you can import them with the due dates, or you can manually do that for each individual item within the Grade Center. We take a look here in our question panel to just make sure that everybody's on the same page. Okay. Um, yes, all of the items that we're talking about today, I'll try to provide some documentation for you. Um, I particularly, I see that a couple um, folks feel like this is kind of a really, it feels cumbersome. It feels different at the at 
the first, um, but I find it very, very flexible. And I think our students are being a little bit more sp successful with the having the due dates printed for them um, because they can go to one location. And this also, everything that we do on the due dates, it shows up in the syllabus, it shows up here in the calendars, but it also shows up on their to-do list here in the dashboard. It also keeps us on track as a faculty member as well. So here are those same due dates keep us on track with a to-do list. Now you'll notice here that says 12. This means that I have 12 things to grade in this particular course. I can just click on this little link and I'll go right into my grade center so I can grade these particular assignments. So this is a nice feature for faculty too. So you have those due dates, it's due date driven, and you also see right here from your dashboard what needs to be graded. Okay, so again, we can change those dates by dragging and dropping them on the calendar, or we can also change those due dates at the individual level. Um, I know it's a little bit difficult to do. Um, we did have a behind the scenes kind of little tips and trick, a little script that you could run. Um, Heidi, maybe you can chime in here. Um, it, we've had mixed results with that. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's a it's a tip that we received from the uh, the Canvas community. Someone had kind of created this um, this little coding project that will allow you to easily update all of the assignment due dates. Heidi, what's the status of that? Um, hi, everyone. Uh, yes, last I checked, uh, last week sometime, it was working, or it worked for me. Um, I will post um, a link to that information in the community here in our chat box in just a minute. Great. So we went through the how-tos very specifically in the Ivy Learn platform, and now we have a behind the scenes, kind of a little, um, kind of like a Ivy Learn hack for you. And Heidi's going to put that in the chat box. You'll see that pop up. It'll be a link to that particular document. So you can also use that, download that, and try to update all of your due dates at one time. Thanks, Heidi. Okay, I want to point out to you, since we're talking about course content, this is something new um, within the last month or so that's happened in Ivy Learn. When you go into your course, Oh, still no content there. Let me pick another one. I'm going to go into my demo course that I've been using for student demonstrations. And we go into our modules view. It used to be you would just create a module and you would create, create those items within that module. And you would have to drag and drop where you wanted that information to go. Now if you go over here to the settings, here's the module name, if I go over here to the settings, I can now move content, so maybe I don't want this uh, particular area to be here, this takes care of all the module content and it moves it from one module to another. So to do that you click move contents and you can select to move it into a different module. Okay, just remember that when you move all of this, there's not an undo button. So make sure you're really moving all of the content items to where you want it to be. But this is something new that you can do. You can decide where you want it to be placed, at the top, before, or after, or at the bottom of a different module. Okay, you can also go to the individual item. Okay, so let's look at overview learning objectives and content. From the little settings button again, I can move to, I decide where I want it to be moved to, and I'm going to say, I'm going to still stay in the module one, but I'm going to place my overview at the bottom, and I click move. And you'll now notice when I scroll down here, that particular item,
has been moved to the bottom of the page. Now that doesn't make much sense, so I'm going to go ahead and move that back. But again, each individual item you can move. You select where, what module, and where you want it to be. And it automatically moves it for you. You still have the option to drag and drop, but sometimes it's easier to just uh, use that move button. The other thing that's new here is that from this pull down menu, you can also duplicate. So, for example, if I was trying to um, create some materials for my traditional classroom and I want to use my sequential learning order, I can duplicate an item. So, say you have um, a discussion board that you're going to use every semester, every um, week or you want to make sure that you're building in your learning objectives for every week, you can select the item and use the pull down menu and select duplicate. And it now duplicates that particular item. I can now adjust this, um, add to it by cl clicking the edit button. I can manipulate it in any way that I want to. So again, that's under the modules index view. You'll notice when it does make a copy, it tells you it's a copy and it does not automatically publish that or make it available to students. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that. The other thing that you can do here is you might notice from that pull down menu, you can add something to the commons. Okay, so if you want to share something with the Commons or even share it just for yourself so you can pull it back down, you can select a particular item and you can share it to the Commons. So I've selected my quiz. I'm going to share to the Commons. You have to give it some information. Who can use this resource? Um, all of Ivy Tech, select groups, um, public, any Canvas users. That means the whole, everybody who ever has a Canvas account and across the world. So if you do select groups, for example, you can post or share things within your own um, organization. So if you're teaching accounting and you want to share something with other people who are teaching that accounting class, you can select your particular um, group. And then you just fall, fill in all of the prompts and then click share. All right, I'm going to take a quick second to check out the, check, uh, the question box. Deborah asks, is there a way to arrange um, your semester, arrange the dashboard? Um, there's a limited way of doing that, which is by going through to courses. And then you can click the little star to make it available or not available on your dashboard. There's also a kind of an Ivy Learn or Canvas hack um, that someone had written that will allow you to adjust your dashboard. Um, anytime you use any of these Ivy Learn hacks or these Canvas hacks, I need to tell you that the college does not support that and it may or may not work on your individual computer system because of your administrative rights. Um, but I think, Heidi, do we have that stashed away somewhere? The um, dashboard card organizer? Yes I'm, yes, I'm looking for a link to it as we speak. Great, thank you so much. So we'll also put that there um, in the chat box for you and you can download that link. Uh, but it does allow you to rearrange your dashboard. And again, I'm just cautioning you that the help desk, for example, does not support the, 
the little hacks that we find from the Canvas community, and it doesn't. It also depends on what access you have to your computer. Uh, Verdon, that's a great question. Can a module due date be set um, and then all those dates are due at the same time? And unfortunately, no. And I would love that because, as you know, most of the assignments per module are due on the same date. Um, that is something that I would recommend us getting together on and putting that into the Canvas suggestion box because they are pretty responsive to um, suggestions from, from the community. Karen says that she tried that hack last semester with the dashboard and it didn't quite work. Yeah, I'm sorry. It is a hit and miss. Oh, so Elaine had a question. I wanted to use the sandbox as a repository for my files that I use from semester to semester um, teaching several subjects, but found that I could not access those files from within my other courses. Was I doing something wrong? No, not necessarily. When you add files to a course, that's where they're located. They're actually located within that particular course. If you go up here to your account settings, and you go to files, this gives you global access, okay? So you can add your files that you want to save from semester to semester here in this area, okay? So you could just select it under my files and you could add those files here so you can access them through globally through all of your courses. But when they are in a course, those are just uh, kind of standard um, and kind of stuck there within that individual class. Great question. Um, can you rename the course in the dashboard so it comes up alphabetically first? Um, you have the chance to, you can give your courses nicknames. I've never known that to really ever um, help my dashboard arrangements, but to add a nickname to your course, all right, so say I'm going to, I'm going to use my demo course here, um, the dot 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 always means that there's additional menu items, so when I click that, I can give it a nickname. I can also change my the co the color of my color block. Okay, so now I call this particular course alpha, um, but it doesn't necessarily change my display. Oops. I go back to my real name so I'll know what that is. Okay, but you can add a nickname. The nickname is very helpful if you teach the same course in multiple sections. So maybe online and then traditional, you can make little notes to yourself here using that particular nickname. Okay, the other thing I want to show you today, and then we'll still continue to work through your questions, um, is that we have some grade center changes that are coming up. And it, they're coming up very, very soon. And I think you're really going to like them. I've been piloting them in several of the courses that I've been teaching. Um, but they haven't quite been released yet into our production environment. So... Let me go in here to my other environment. This is our beta or testing environment. But I want to show you what you can expect in the new Grade Center. And I really, really, really love it. So I'm going to click Grades. 
This is coming very, very soon. The first thing you'll notice is that there is a different menu type. So instead of a lot of this information being located over here on the, on the right hand side, you'll have the information located here on the left. You'll still see the list of student names. Um, you can, if you have your notes column, you'll still see, you know, your columns and all of that kind of thing. The nice thing about this particular new grade center is that one of the things you can do is you can actually modify the width of the grade center more like an Excel spreadsheet. That's particularly um, new and very nice to see. You can also from the grade book file here on the pull down menu you can see an individual view and then you can also see your gradebook history the view changes you can now in the in the old grade center the one that we currently have you can only arrange your grade center by assignment type and due date now with the new gradebook features that are coming out very soon you can arrange the order you can do the default order you can arrange alphabetically by the assignment name um, both A to Z or Z to A. You can arrange it by due date, oldest to newest. Um, you can arrange it by points possible and you can also arrange it by module. So there's a lot more flexibility in the how you can arrange your grade center. You can do also, you can also filter now. So I'm only going to see assignment groups you can filter by assignment groups or I can also filter um, so any one of these groups, I only want to see discussion board posts, for example. And you see my grade center changed. Now I want to look at just my homework and quizzes. And I'll just see my homework categories. You can also view or filter by modules. So you can only see, I'm going to see all of module one. So you can grade one module at a time. Okay. So that's kind of nice. There's a lot of flexibility here um, with these views. There is no reset, by the way. So you have to deselect those. Hopefully that's a feature that's coming up. You can also now arrange your color coding so by default, you know, you have the colors. If there's an assignment that's been turned in late, um, you can now select a different color for that. You, if you know the code, the color code, that you can type that in and apply it. So you can now, if you don't like a particular color, you can change your color scheme. Under Actions, you can import or export the gradebook just like you did before. Over here on the far right hand side, whoops, I apologize, I'm working for my laptop today and it doesn't like to, Oh, I'm sorry folks, give me one second here. Always one click away from success. Sorry about that. Okay, let's go back into the Grade Center. Okay, over here under Settings, this is a this is an all or nothing feature. Okay, once you set up late policies within your course, you can never undo them. Our administrative support team, our tech support team, Canvas team cannot revert or reverse this policy. So once you've engaged in setting up a late policy, it cannot be changed within the course ever. Okay, so just be very, very careful when you're setting up these policies. But this is a new feature. You can set up that for a late policy policy um, to automatically apply 
a grade for missing submissions. So if someone did not turn in their assignment, you could say I'm you're going to get zero points for that or one point or whatever you'd want it to be. You can also set it up to automatically apply deductions to late submissions. So maybe you want them to lose one point a day for each day late and the maximum amount of points you want them to lose um, would be, we'll say, 25. Okay, and that looks, that's a percentage. And then you click update and you now put those policies in place. So it's very powerful. It does cause, you know, consequences for students who turn in assignments late um, or have missing assignments. However, it is irreversible. So think very carefully about what you want to do if you want to use these late policies. To access those, that's over here under the settings tool. Some other features here within the Grade Center. Trying to get this back to where we can actually see something here. This is why the product has not went live yet. But also from the each individual column, you can also select to sort by the names. You can display as the first or last name or last or first. You can also show inactive enrollments. Those are the students who've been dropped for non-attendance or non-payment or something like that. You could see those listed here. Um, within the actual grades as well, I could get back to that. You can also do a sort. This has become very handy for me um, when I'm grading things. I like to do the um, those who haven't scored, who scored a zero or a blank, I can arrange that here um, in the column from A to Z or from Z to zero or the default order. Okay, so that's all very, very, very um, useful. Um, it's still a little quirky. Um, once it does become available in our Ivy Learn production environment, you will be able to go to settings. This is going to be an option, kind of think of it as a pilot. You'll be able to go into your settings and under feature options, you'll be able to select new grade book. Okay, so you can turn that on at the individual level within the course. That's the Grade Center. Coming soon. All right, I'm going to jump back into our question panel here. Okay, Ken, you're saying that when you copy your syllabus from Word and paste it into Canvas, you're losing all formatting, including the type, color, tables, and highlighting. And you did this in the fall, and it was successful. I haven't heard anybody else um, have that issue. Heidi, are you familiar with that? No, unfortunately, I'm I'm not. Um, we just typically work with the formatting that's in the existing syllabus. I haven't done a Word uh, upload. Yeah, you, that might be where you could copy if it's a syllabus that you're going to use from semester to semester. It might be something that you could copy over um, into your new section. 
But if not, I would, you could also put in a help desk ticket and we can investigate it. I can't promise that we'll find an immediate solution, um, but if you walk us through those steps and we can try to duplicate that issue, the help desk um, folks would be glad to take a look at that as well. Sorry, Ken. Um, is there a way to set up attendance to show how many absences a student has? There's actually this tool called uh, Roll Call. So if you go into settings within your course, it's been a while since I've used this, so just hang in there with me. I'll try to remember how this is done. And then you go to, let's see if it's on the navigation. Let's see if it's already on the menu here. Don't see it here. All right, so when I go to apps, I can look for installed applications. I'm looking for roll call. I don't know if I'm just extra slow. Let me go into the production environment instead. Yeah, I think because I was in the beta um, settings, my beta environment, I couldn't get to that. So let's go into my dashboard. Let's locate a class. Go into settings. This is on your course menu. Navigation. And the first thing I do is I like to see if the the application is here at the system level. Here we go. This is called attendance. I'm just going to click on the settings enable. And I want to make sure that I save that. it now appears. So when you click attendance, the app should open and it's fairly straightforward. Um, you can mark everyone present or unmark everyone. You can actually do the individual person just by clicking their name that they're there. On the more tool here you can also see um, collectively how many times that person has been present, late, or absent. You can also, here, by clicking that more button beside the person's name, you can add a note that they were not there, that they were um, late, or that that person is unmarked. Okay, you weren't sure. So you can use this tool and it's available right there um, in your settings. And then under navigation, you can enable that. And then students, when they log on to it, they see their own individual attendance records and not everyone else's. You can also view it by a class. So if you had in a traditional classroom, um, you had a seating chart, or if you wanted to um, look at it in this view, you can do that. Again, the same tools are available to you. Um, it's just a different view. And you can scroll from location to location or date to date. You can also edit your seating chart. You can add people to it. These are all the students who are enrolled in your course. You can move them around. So it just depends on how much time you want to spend in the roll call or attendance tool.
I don't think that is the, the very good point. Don says that when you add roll call, it does add 100 points directly into the grade book. Um, our, town, our attendance is counted in a different way. Is there a way to do this without, um, you know, changing the, the points possible? I think when you go into the grade center, I don't think you can change the points possible, but from the pull down menu, Okay, so I hit edit. You can give it a different points possible. I'm surprised by that. And then you can also, should be able to um, not count this as part of the grade center. Hmm. You can do zero points. You can also do it as a uh, complete or incomplete, so they were either there or they weren't, or you can put it as a not graded assignment. And then save that. So again, how did I get there? I was in the grade center. And then we went into um, the roll call item on the grade center Huh, now that I set it up, I probably can't find it. Hmm. I'm probably just scrolling right over it. Anyways, when I did that, I clicked the link here and then I went into the edit mode and I changed the points possible on that particular assignment. Okay, so um, Joanne has given us a link to a video that shows how to use roll call and setting up a waiting um, points as a zero percentage. Let me put that in the chat box for everyone so that everyone can see that. There you go. It's in the chat box now. Um, that option would need to be updated daily, correct? Ungraded daily and points possible attendance. I think when it is set to 100, per, 100 points, that's for the whole semester for, or every time you take attendance. I don't think it keeps adding like a thousand points to your course um, each time, but you would update um, your attendance every, every time you had class. Um, in an online situation, I don't think it necessarily works the same way. Um, usually attendance and participation is marked by their academic um, event activity. So anytime you submit an assignment or participate. I think Joanne is right. If you put the set it as zero or as a non-graded item, it probably falls off the grade center. Um, so you got to be careful with that. You might want to make it worth one point so you, it's visible. All right. Okay, so we had a couple questions about the free trial. Okay, and there's a couple things I want to point out to you with the free trial. So we used to have a system called the three chapter website. Um, the participants in that, the major participants, Pearson, McGraw-Hell, and Cengage. 
It's the same thing. Uh, we're replacing this now with a tool um, called Vital Source. If you've ever taught an Include Ed course, um, Vital Source is the preferred uh, book vendor because it's accessible and you can um, download the book. So the publishers got together to help create, and we worked with Follett as well as Vital Source to create this free trial access. So students can access that. You can add this directly onto your menu item. So if you'd like, um, when you go into your course, go to settings, and then under navigation, you will see textbook free trial and you can enable that. Don't forget to save. Okay, and students can access this free trial directly from the course when you do that. I would caution you to check to make sure that the title is available. There are limited titles available. How that worked is Follett presented a list of all the um, Cengage, Pearson, and McGraw-Hill titles. Um, to our vital source partners and they converted these into a digital file format and students should be able to search for those books um, using this free trial. Okay, This is also located under the help tab in the student resource center. This is a great place to direct students. Um, students would simply click on the textbook free trial and then under the modules area there are actually handouts on how students can use this as well. And when it opens up, students can search by author, title, or ISBN number. If the search comes up with a book, it'll appear kind of like this under the discoverable, and you can view the details. You can also view all, which will load all of our titles. There's about five, there's about a little under a thousand titles available so when you click the student clicks view details they can select to have a free trial it's two weeks from the moment you accept the free trial or you can click ready to buy and it takes you directly into the Ivy Tech um, bookstore There are instructions as well in the Faculty Resource Center. So if you're not a, already a member of the Faculty Resource Center, you should probably do so. You click the Help tab and then Faculty Resource Center. It's going to ask you um, if you haven't been a member in the past. They'll ask you to enter in your Ivy Tech email information so we can confirm that you're a faculty member. And then we've posted over here on the right-hand side there's some information about the textbook free trials, formerly known as the three chapter website. And then there's also a couple other, um, Norton and Oxford have a couple um, titles as well. So there's a whole section here in the Faculty Resource Center um, about the free textbook chapter site. And here's some questions. Here's how to get to the Norton titles, Oxford Press. So there's lots of information located here as well. Um, I think it was F Phil, were you the one who said you couldn't find your... Oh, R Richard, I'm sorry. Richard, you said you couldn't find your phil Philosophy 101 book? Do you know who the publisher is? Hmm. Okay. Um, clear your cache and re reboot your your trial. Um, you can also Let's see, I'm trying to figure out the best way to report that. Um, Richard, if you want to send me an email, klong at ivytech.edu, I can see what I can do to get that um, title for you. I can't promise. Is there a way to get the Pearson MyLab free trial as well, or do I need to contact Pearson? Okay, so within your course, 
okay? So when you have a link to an assignment for a, um, a MyLab, most all of those, um, all of our content partners, when you click that link, unless it's part of the Include Ed program, it'll prompt the students to enter an access code or select free trial. So that's already built in to their product line. Valerie, we no longer, this free um, textbook trial, that actually allows them access to the entire book for two weeks. So if you had a class that skipped around to different chapters, the whole book is now available to students for um, two weeks. If they choose to purchase that book, any of the annotations, any of the highlighting that they've um, saved stays with them. They don't lose that. Um, if your textbook doesn't appear in the um, free chapter website, then you know feel free to use those PDF um, files if you have them. But this is replacement for the three chapter website. Okay, I think we had some other questions. I feel like I've missed one around, missed a couple. Um, if you were the person, I think someone had a question about Verisite. Um, would you please raise your hand and let me know who that was, please? I think you can, yeah, you can raise your hand from the um, go to webinar control panel. Also, if you have a question that we haven't answered yet, um, feel free to raise your hand and we'll, we'll try to get to you. I want to make sure that all the questions are answered that we possibly can offer you. Kathy, it looks like the question about Verisite came from Karen Bain. Um, it's it was earlier up in our question box. Um, okay. She's she's asking. Um, I have questions about using Verisite. Why it often presents unrealistically high matches, such as when a student has been to the tutoring center. Um, I used to turn it in. It didn't have that. Plus, turn it in would say where the matches were found. I was thinking that Verisite does report where they were found. Yes, they should, and they do. And what they do, I think, um, in the report, and Heidi, would you mind searching um, the Canvas community for the Verisite information? I think there's an example of um, a report. Sure, I'll do that. Because I don't think I have one handy that wouldn't be a violation of FERPA to show. Um, but when you open up your report, and you're right, so in the in the grade center, you would actually see a column um, it, with some highlights. So if you engage in Verisite, there might be like a red, like, hey, big plagiarism issue here, and then I think there's blue and green um, to ver to you know give you the various uh, warning signs. When you click on that, there is a way that you can view the report. Um, and sometimes it'll say, where was this plagiarized from? And it'll say student resource. Um, if you really do think that it is a, a case of plagiarism, where someone is you know, using someone else's uh, paper, and it's not their own paper, or it's not just a commonly used name. Again, this is a plagiarism detection tool. It isn't, you know, the same thing as we had with SafeAssign and Blackboard. You know, you have to do a little bit of research, and you have to kind, kind of apply. Um, you know, does this make sense? Is it just a citing issue? Um, 
is it a common term or phrase that's used um, for that particular topic over and over again? Um, but if there is, as a student resource, and you're not sure what that resource is, put in a help desk ticket. Um, there is a back-end way for them to investigate what those resources are. VeriSight matches things from our old Blackboard um, plagiarism detection tool. So it's checking with all that data, it's checking with all of the data within the Ivy Tech, Ivy Learn community, and then also within, it checks all kinds of websites all the time. It's always out there searching and checking and always being updated. There's thousands, like I think there's over 10,000 files um, that they're always searching and looking for. So it is a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure why it shows a higher, you know, rate other than it checks more uh, databases than the than the vital or excuse me that than Safe Assign did. Um, Turnitin is a very you know expensive plagiarism detection tool, and I know some of our English 111 courses have that built into it. Um, I don't know the difference between them. I haven't spent that much time investigating that, but I do know that. Um, if you have questions about a student resource, otherwise it should tell you the website, if it was a Wikipedia account, um, and all those other types of things. just scrolling through the question panel here to make sure that we have all the questions. If you do have a question, I can also turn your microphone on if you just raise your hand. Oh, Deborah has the question. Um, if Canvas is working on a way of canceling a student's attempt rather than having the instructor go in the assignment and give the student another attempt, are they working on just being able to cancel the attempt by right clicking on the grade and the grade book? The issue has come up time and time again on forums. Um, I don't haven't seen that in any of the release notes or on their roadmap. Um, the nice thing about the Canvas community is that you can put that forward as a feature request and everyone can vote on that. The more votes you get, the more you can um, send that up to the top and get that on the map. I haven't seen that as part of an option. I don't know if that's simply because um, when you reset the attempt, that's also part of their disability support services when you, where you add students to um, extra time and those kinds of things. Okay, great question. Um, Belinda has the question, what do you do if you import the wrong content um, from Commons into your course? So, prior to students having access to the course, if you have content that isn't um, what you wanted it to be, you've done something wrong, you can go into your settings, okay? If you've downloaded the wrong content or if you've, you know, added it more than, excuse me, one time, excuse me, Excuse me just a second. Apologize, that was a sneeze and a cough all at one time. Um, under the settings, you can actually reset your course content. This allows you, and that will wipe out all of the content in your course, but it does not erase any enrollments, so your enrollments don't change. You only want to do this prior to the start of the semester, and just remember that students will be getting access 
two, the Ivy Learn courses, two days before the start of classes. So in Banner, if your course was scheduled to start on Tuesday, students will start getting access to that particular course on Sunday. This is something new this semester as well. We're auto-publishing all of the courses for um, Ivy Learn. In the past, you as a faculty member have had to publish the actual course. Um, now, we're going to try to do that for you. This is the first semester for that. That doesn't mean that you don't have to publish the individual items within the course. So just um, make sure that you're ready to go um, two days before the start of your the course is becoming available to students. Also, you never want to reset your content after students have access. We'll be sending out some, um, we had a request for the links that we've been mentioning. Yes, we can go ahead and try to send those out to you today as well. Oh, so how do you submit um, an item to be voted on in the Canvas community? All right, let me see. It's been a while since I've been here, but let's go into um, the Faculty Resource Center. And I actually want to go into the Canvas community, so I'm just going to click Canvas here, their little icon. All right, and then Okay, so here's the whole area. So I'm in, I went to the Faculty Resource Center. I clicked Canvas. That allows me to be just have single sign on into the community. And then when I scroll down here under share ideas, there's ideas currently open for vote. Okay, here it's also located under ideas, the end ideas menu. And you can see what's being suggested. You can also create an idea. So here we're in Canvas, we're under their ideas area, and then we're going to create an idea. And this is where we can put something up to vote. Okay. You'll see if it's been opened for voting. So here's things that are open for voting. If you want to see any of these tools, make sure that you're um, selecting this or participating in the voting process. Okay, there's a list of things. Uh, Karen, you have a, a specific math question about average scores. I'm not completely following your question. Richard, thank you for attending today. Yes, if any of you need to exit out of the program, we're going a little bit later than we had originally anticipated, you can go to the GoToWebinar control panel and click the X to exit.
if the grade book could average scores. Okay, so that information is available at the individual level. And Heidi, jump in here because I want to say it's not in the grade center, but it's actually at the individual assignment level. Um, I've been looking for an answer to this question since Karen first asked it, and I don't find a way to average a grade for an assignment. There is a way to do it for quizzes, you can say to average attempts, um, but I'm not finding it for assignments. You can find the average grade of all students, but I don't think that's what she's asking. I think she's asking if students submit twice, could, could we average their grades um, automatically? And I don't believe so. Oh, on a multiple attempts type of thing? Yeah, like if they wanted to submit um, two versions of an essay. Karen, we'll continue to keep our eyes out for that, but um, hopefully that that answers a little bit of your question. I think it only takes when you do multiple attempts, the highest and or the lowest or the most recent. I don't think it merges those scores in for the student. Okay. Um, oh, I have a couple other questions coming in. Karen, that sounds like something um, being able to, you know, after giving comments, you want to be able to average their score. Um, it sounds like a great idea. I don't think that's the way it works now. It's I've never been able to average a score. I often have multiple attempts on things that um, are submitted to me. I can override that score if I wanted to manually calculate that. Um, that might be a, a great idea to post to that Canvas community as an idea for an upgrade. Um, can you save the grade book automatically? Um, not that I'm aware of, but you can save your grade book. Um, that is a best practice um, by going into the export CVS CSV file and that downloads your grade center into an Excel spreadsheet. And you'll see that it just popped up here. Just so you know the people that you're seeing in this particular grade center, these are our super users. This is a demo course that we've been using over and over again for the past year. Um, so I'm not sharing any uh, FERPA information or violation. These are actually our super users who are part of our demonstration group. But this is a, um, a copy of the grade center that you can get from your export file within the grade center itself over here. Um, how do we get to the faculty resources? So on your global navigation menu within the Ivy Learn platform, you go to the very bottom and you click help and then you select faculty resource center. It's at the top of your list. 
it's going to prompt you if you've never logged into the faculty resource center it is kind of a, a, a it's a protected community um, it'll ask you to enter in your ivy tech you know make sure that you're entering in your ivy tech username when you request permission to access our faculty resource center once you're there um, you'll get response back within probably 24 hours that you're in um, and then you can explore there's a lot of great community activity in here. So a lot of folks are asking questions and you can see what questions have been asked. We post a lot of information about content, files, projects, upcoming training events. There's a helpful link se session over here on the right hand side. This will also allow you um, to jump off into the Canvas community by clicking the Canvas icon up here on the right hand or left hand corner. Your Canvas guides are available to you. You can Google Canvas guides or um, once you're in your course, you can also access those from the Help tab. Okay, so here's the Help tab. Search the Canvas guides. We've got a lot of great questions today. Um, Karen, we do, I know it was a Karen, I'm sorry, no, it was our Verisite conversation. Um, there's a lot of Verisite information too here in our Faculty Resource Center. Uh, da -da -da -da. I think if you go in the content area, there's also a search button. And there's a lot of information here on the Verisite tool within our community. As well as at the in the Canvas community as well. Um, if I give student if it's I give a student a second attempt, can they see the answers for the first attempt? It all depends on how you have the have the um, assessment set up, the assignment set up. So if you have it set up to only show the question and the answer that they gave and if it was right or wrong, um, then that's what they'll see. If you allow students to see the correct scores after they've submitted the test or exam, then yes, they would see the, see the uh, grades and the questions and the correct answers. Depends on your settings, how you set up your, your assignment. Okay, we have time for just one or two more questions. We have another webinar getting started for students with Ivy Learn webinar starting here soon. I want to make sure that we're prepared for that. All right, I hope that you found this is a valuable um, 
webinar today. I hope you've learned something new. You've definitely challenged Heidi and I to find some answers and definitely um, to, gives us a great idea of what your finding using these tools like for example the Vera site um, and the reporting features sounds like that needs a little work and uh, we have some suggestions that probably could be moved forward into our canvas environment about averaging scores and that type of thing for those of you who are saying thank you you're absolutely welcome We're always available for questions and to offer assistance. So please don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. It's klong at ivytech.edu. If I don't know the answer, I'll be sure to try to find it for you. So I'm always willing to help. All right. Thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you so much for being my partner in crime on this webinar. And we will look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Have a wonderful semester.